Hello and welcome to Shutter Study. In the last episode we took a quick look at the aspects of framing a photograph. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at when framing fails and you want to crop the image. Now as photographers we tend to pride ourselves in getting the image right first time. However this may not work out for the best and you may want to crop the image further in order to improve the image better than when it was first taken. Let's take a closer look at the different terminology that does come up with cropping. First up is auto crop. This is where you effectively rely on a computer or a printing lab to print the photo in an automatic crop without you having a say of how it finally looks. Traditionally this will automatically happen in labs, but it's recommended to review your photos before printing just in case you lose the head in the mix of things. Alternatively there is shrink to fit. This is where you shrink the image to fit on the photo paper. This will lead to an amount of white space at the top or bottom or sides of the pictures depending on which side is the longest. Normally when it comes to printing it's not recommended to have white space as it can affect the overall look. If you wish to avoid the hassle of auto cropping or shrink to fit, you can manually crop the photo before printing. What this will require you is to use editing software such as Photoshop and crop the photo to the dimensions that you wish to print. The alternative is in-camera cropping, which as the name suggests is you edit it on the camera itself. Not every camera can feature this option and it's not always as effective because you lose resolution as you crop further down. If we were to recommend a cropping method, it's usually best to do it on the computer. Another question that comes up when it comes to cropping is horizontal versus vertical or portrait versus landscape. This is effectively when you take a picture that's in one format but choose to crop it in an alternative format because it improves the picture greatly. Next up we have aspect ratio. The aspect ratio is the ratio of the dimensions that the camera uses to take the photo. Normally this is based on the dimensions of the sensor which is normally in a 4.3 or 3.2 format. However on compact cameras it uses a 3.4 format instead. Not to mention other specialized cameras use a 16.9 or a 1.1 format, which is not really conventional sizes unless you're using it in terms of film format or using a similar to the 120 format. Most digital SLRs shoot in a 3.2 format, so if you plan to print your images in a 6x4 inch dimension image, it means that it will print exactly to the size that you intended. However, on the compact cameras, because they shoot in a 3.4 format, the dimensions are slightly off when it comes to printing by 6x4, meaning much more is cropped off your image. This is why in printing shops they recommend to print in a 7x5 format, because less is cropped off the picture. However, in both cases, if you wish to print images in an 8x10 format, the 4.3, 3.2 or the 3.4 format sensors don't support this, and normally requires cropping in Photoshop. The reason being is an 8 by 10 inch picture relies on a 4.5 format. For those who are asking in regards to the compact camera having it in a 3.2 format, some cameras do have the options of altering your dimensions when taking a picture. However, we would recommend not changing the aspect ratio in your cameras as it can distort or stretch the image. It's normally better to crop the pictures afterwards. So now that we covered the terminology of cropping, let's do a quick run through of the do's and don'ts when it comes to cropping. Crops tend to look better when you use a higher resolution image, so it's best to take it in the highest quality possible on your camera. If your image is set to a lower resolution, when you crop in further it leads to pixelation. When it comes to cropping, don't try and use a linear method, feel free to play around with the different cropping styles to choose the best method of how the picture turns out. But however, keep in mind when you're cropping pictures of people, try not to crop at the joints such as wrists or elbows, as this can make the image look awkward. Also don't crop too close to the subject, as you don't want to make your image feel too cramped. Allow some space in your image so it doesn't have a cramped feel. Also this is beneficial with printing as it adds a bit of a bleed. Also don't base the cropping around the center of your photos. The cropping can look much more interesting when it's based off center, more so if you apply the rule of thirds to the cropping process. Also keep in mind when you're cropping, be sure to save it as a duplicate of the image and don't save over the original. You don't want to end up losing your original image over a mistake. So with the do's and don'ts and the terminologies under our belt, we can understand that cropping can improve our photography in such a great way. Cropping can help straighten photos, clean up an image, eliminate distractions from a background, clearly identify the image's focal point, and also fix framing mistakes. Should you have any further questions regarding cropping or framing, feel free to post them in the comments below, ask on our Facebook, Twitter, or Tumblr. If you'd like to learn more with Shutter Study, please subscribe.